Hello, beloveds. I'm here with another transmission for you about current energies and strategies for working with them and just kind of deconstructing a little bit about what's going on. It's very, very interesting, beautiful, energetic times. I am aware that there is lots of disruption feeling um, in the physical plane and lots of disruption experience in the physical plane. We've had uh, lots of significant uh, weather events with uh, some of the unprecedented flooding that we've been hearing about in some parts of the world. We have the kind of the war energies being very uh, kind of present in the in the collective at this time. And what I want to um, share with you is a reminder that actually these things could be radically worse and that some of the lower timelines for humanity that you and others have been part of closing and dissolving and ensuring do not occur um, have much more uh, challenging circumstances for uh, the physical beings um, on the planet. And so, of course, we as humans uh, don't do very well <laughs> historically with embracing the ideas of kind of prevention or preventive strategies in various ways, although we sure love our little phrases, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. We do love that phrase, but we don't generally love to live that way or to really kind of embrace that. We don't celebrate um, the or even acknowledge uh, kind of the things that were forestalled through either wise action or through kind of just higher um, uh, kind of like evolution into um, higher timelines, uh, etc. Um, now, I don't want you spending a lot of attention on this. Those times are closed. Um, but uh, and it doesn't serve to kind of focus in those ways. But I do want you to remember Right. In the same way that we've spoken about in earlier episodes that the, um, you know, the, the coronavirus pandemic experience um, of the last couple of years, while uh, very challenging to many and just deeply distressing and tragic for some, has uh, in various ways, both through death from illness interaction um, and through economic uh, kind of destruction uh, experiences and then through the many kind of, if you will, mental health, emotional uh, state uh, challenges that the, that the various sort of policy um, implications have, have had and continue to have and we don't yet understand or know what will be needed to support the, you know, all those affected by this huge, you know, generational impact. Um, you know, I think this is this will be worthy of understanding at a level, uh, at least at the level of the impacts of the Great Depression on that era uh, in terms of the ripple effects. Um, but we have the energetics uh, now available to us to dissolve that, uh, to resolve that, to close that, to repair that much more quickly. Um, so it's not uh, we don't have to be sort of stuck in that negative space. But my I'm bringing it up because that could have been much worse, right? That could have been a viral um, impact, you know, on the level of something like Ebola, where, you know, a massive percentage of the human population could have been ended. So again, we like to focus on the worst. That is our neurobiology, um, our uh, evolutionary history of our neurobiology, of our brain's development it, uh, with our nervous system is to always focus us on the worst case scenarios and on the difficult bad things and to be scanning for threats at all times. And so that's just kind of how we're wired. And so this is why it's so important to pay so much attention to our neurobiology and to get into uh, skillfulness with the rewiring and then the maintenance and oversight required for that. I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but I want to get into the energetic first. I really want to be there with you. We have this incredible kind of liftoff energy that is building and building and building building as i've been speaking about we are going through this extended passageway period um into the 
pre-dawn golden age sort of part one <laughs> uh, period and so we are still in this passageway and some of us have the experience of our being our kind of full sense of self or you know being out on the other side already but our human our, and our physical being still it has to go through the passageway period. And so for people who are in that place of sort of like, oh, my being is over here in the sort of like, yippee, golden jubilee, festival, lights, energy, right? <laughs> like as I've shared in some other ones, like already over there having a great time. But then there can be these momentary kind of dissonance moments of like kind of a cognitive dissonance or confusion because the body may not quite be all the way over there yet. The biology may not be quite all the way over there yet. And the, and the, and the kind of the human experience may not be materially caught up yet um, because we are all moving through this passage point. So there's an interesting thing that's going on with this passageway as we move now into March. I'm recording this um, on the morning of March 6th, morning Pacific time. And uh, as we as this has been happening in recent days, particularly since the second, um, and this is going to keep building what I'm going to be describing now. This is just going to keep getting bigger, more of um, more intensity of it, more opportunity in it um, as we go through March into April um, with a couple of kind of key interesting inflection points along the way, probably too many to bother enumerating, and it doesn't really matter because in many ways, of course, the dates are kind of artificial human time. Um, but I, I will kind of just point you to a couple of dates in April that I think could be useful for your planning purposes now, which is to kind of be thinking about what am I doing between now as I listen to this, whatever time I'm listening to this, and April 12th and April 22nd. Um, and I want you to be thinking about kind of dedicating your energy, your focus, your attention, the resource that is you in all of your ways to preparing or optimizing is a better way. Preparing isn't a great word, but kind of optimizing yourself for the most fun kind of final move through uh, in April, the end of the passageway. And the passageway is narrowing as we go. And, you know, we talk often about metaphors like the birth canal, and we kind of go through that kind of difficult, squeezy part of the birth canal. But the imagery that's been coming through time and time and time and time again in recent days in particular has been this imagery of the eye of the needle, of passing through the eye of the needle. And, um, and of course, it, you know, for some, you will kind of ha hear the callback into uh, biblical terms. I'm not a Christian. I don't follow the Bible as a religious doctrine. Um, I do have a uh, uh, you know, many years of studying it in early kind of from a literary perspective because it's a very impactful um, on uh, Western literature, Western thinking, Western political thinking. And these were all areas of focus for me when I was in my undergrad years. Um, but and, and of course, it's just everywhere in our culture in various ways that kind of Judeo-Christian language. So this idea of the, how, you know, I, 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 I'm going to paraphrase because I, I don't have the quote in front of me, um, but I believe that the quote from the Bible is something about how it's easier for a camel to move through the eye of the needle than it is for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And this quote is attributed to Jesus. And the, you know, the, and just as a side note, the reason my, direct received understanding of that statement is not to say that there's anything particularly wrong with money, but that historically and traditionally the attachment to money and wealth and the accrual of riches has come from a lower kind of energetic state um, uh, that has been very fear-based. And there is no bringing of fear through the eye of the needle. And so the eye of the needle now, where we think about this, what is most of service to you is this concept of distillation down into your purest essence yet. You have gone through many of these kinds of distillation, compression down into and stripping away and removing of things. This is, there There may still be for many of you a kind of a stripping away feeling. Um, that's fine if that's still going on. What I'm feeling now and seeing um, uh, more predominantly is it's a distillation 
right? It's not even like the classic compression of coal down in to form the diamond, although many may be feeling that, and we may have brief moments of that sense as we're embracing this journey of like, whoa, I'm getting a big squish, right? Like, and when you feel that, I encourage you to just be like, oh, it's just more compression into diamond, right? Just shining up, brightening up that diamond. But even more useful is this idea of distillation down. Um, the word purity, as we've spoken about it in other uh, sessions, has some connotations for people that um, are problematic um, and in particularly tied to patriarchal um, tropes, um, you know, very prevalent within, um, uh, you know, most patriarchal religious structures as well as cultural structures as well, where it's this sort of particularly harmful um, for for women, um, but also very harmful for men in various ways as well. I'm talking about purity from the standpoint of the removal of that which is not you, that which is not yours, that distillation down, that minimalist, there's a minimalist essence to what's happening. You want to just lean everything down, minimize it all, minimize, whatever, you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> words. Um, and, you know, I love to make up words, but only when they're really useful. So this minimalizing it down, um, uh, really leaning it down, this can be happening for you now. You may be aware of this, like ideas may be coming through or clarity may be coming through around this related to what you're doing in your business, what you're doing in your artwork, um, what you're doing in your lifestyle, um, what you're doing in your community, uh, literally and physically what you're doing in your living situation. Um, you know, of course, it's, you know, historically, you know, th this is a season that is really great for so-called spring cleaning. Um, and there are many reasons that, that we kind of have that energetic be so prevalent at this time of year. Um, so this sort of purifying, stripping away, leaning down, distillation into your purest essence yet, right? Like I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about like when um, – I'm blanking on all the all the human words for this right now, but when we work with plants to to essentially allow the the steaming of the the plants in order to have the water from that steam which holds this beautiful essence of the plant in a kind of its purest highest vibe sense, and then we can work with that plant essence um, to support various experiences that we want in our bodies and in our minds and in our hearts and in our kind of connectedness. That's a distillation process, right? So kind of really lean into that. It's very fun. Now, what I want you to understand is that this distillation process and this moving through the eye of the needle, there's a paradox involved in this that's really important for what's going on right now for you to have the most kind of joyful, easiest experience through this. So yes, distillation down to that like that diving in deep to that inner pearl, that inner core essence, that deepest, like tiniest little micro fractal, perfect, you know, you-ness, right? You being this, that is what you get to carry through the eye of the needle. That's it. You don't get to carry through any other stuff. You don't get to bring anything else through. Um, this includes other people, other beings, um, you know, all sorts of stuff. So this work right now is what's mine, what's not mine, what's me, what's not me. And so that can, if we only focus on that one side of the paradox, second side coming in a moment, if we only focus on that one side of the paradox, we will have a ultimately frustrating experience because we will end up in a very... Um, in like a vacuum where it's just us. It's just you. It's just me, right? It's only me as if I'm alone in it and there's nothing else. And that's not true. That's just not accurate to my understanding of the nature of reality. As I always say, you must determine and understand and work with your own understanding of the nature of reality. But my understanding and experience of the nature of reality is imbued entirely and informed entirely by this deep sacred current of life force which is creating all the time and is animating and moving through everything and all things and all beings and there are many of us who exist and 
this idea of working only within the uh, essence of self can accidentally, if you're not paying attention, you can end up in a kind of an echo chamber that is only you in it as if you are the sole being that exists and nothing else exists. We see this in, um, you know, sort of distorted spiritual ideas around like, oh, it's all just, you know, it's, I'm just making up everything. It's all just a creation and a figment of my mind and none of you actually exist. Um, so, you know, if that's your, already your vibe, then what I'm going to say next probably won't make sense to you or you won't enjoy it or we won't work for you and that's fine. But that's not my experience and I don't find that that's helpful. I find that that creates kind of a dead end for people in many different ways because the truth is that we are all connected and we are all connected in this incredible network, all connected by this deep sacred current of life force and many other like specific actual kind of energetic networks and, you know, however language you want to use for that, um, also kind of occur, if you will. So let's just start with you, for example. So before we move fully into the other side of the paradox. So you think of yourself as an individual singular being while you're here in your human form. Um, particularly as a human, we really have this idea of ourselves and it's a very strong, common kind of trope in the world, particularly in the West, this idea of the individual and the power of the individual and the authority of the individual and the individual going alone and the maverick and the, um, you know, the kind of like go West, young man, go West, which is, this is a very powerful energetic that I personally love and have embraced throughout my life journey, have really enjoyed kind of the hero's journey approach to things and continue to enjoy that and use that as one of the many kind of threads that I weave together in my experience. But when we only, when we kind of look at that as the only way as the, you know, that is it and we get dogmatic about it, we miss a lot of truth and a lot of opportunity. And if you just look, just, just using basic human science and just look at your body, your body is a collective of many, 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 many beings millions, maybe billions of organisms make up the collective that is the human Melanie, that is the human you. And these beings are all working together, sometimes at cross purposes, sometimes in harmony, and, um, and they are what is creating this experience of this human being. So you are a collective. And you are part of a collective, just as there are, you know, these millions and billions of organisms within your body that allow you to exist as the idea of you in your human sense of that. You are one of billions and billions of organisms that allow humanity to exist and have an, ex an experience of, oh, what's humanity doing? And you may sometimes feel able to sort of tap into or drop into kind of the undulating wave of humanity and what it's doing and what it's been doing and experiencing and the kinds of ups and downs and, you know, waves and rolls and, and, and whatnot that it's experienced over time, the ripples of it uh, throughout the time of its existence. And it's, and it's different evolutionary pathways that have occurred in the past and are occurring now as we move ahead. And also humanity itself is one little uh, organism, if you will, or entity within the collective of all the beings that live on and around Earth. So you really, you can zoom out quite a bit here and really understand the connectedness of this. And when you really are able to then, and here we're moving into the other side of the paradox, when you really can move into the experience, the understanding, the, the, the connection to the, the acceptance of the interconnect, the, the, first of all, the existence of all these other beings, other humans, other plants, other animals, other fungi, other um, macroalgae in the sea, other fish, other mammals, other birds, other insects, you know, all these other beings, then you can, um, you can have a different, a very different experience um, of kind of your relationship with that, uh, with that fabric. Uh, that fabric of kind of 
reality on earth, if you will. We'll just leave it on the earth kind of physical, biological plane for a moment just to make it manageable, <laughs> right? So this connectedness, how do we take that through the eye of the needle? So because it's like, wait, I can't bring everybody through with me. How does that work? <laughs> well, it works because when you really distill down to that purest essence of yourself, within it is a microfractal perfectly contained of the entirety of your connectedness to all things. And so, in fact, much of what has to be removed in order to experience that distillation is what's covering your access to that. So, um, yes. And so in the, the, the other thing that I want to say, I want to share just from my own experience about the experience within your human of the connectedness and the, the existence and relational, relational nature of all things and interconnectedness of all things and all beings, all things having uh, beingness, um, is you move to an experience of not so first it starts with not centering on human ideas we have so many like i still have this sometimes right but this human centered way of thinking about and deconstructing and classifying the world um does not help us it does not serve us right um in the same ways that i've just been discussing already but as you move further and further into your sense of connectedness, one of the things that starts to happen, and this is moving into what we might think of as more the esoteric, um, uh, and by esoteric in this case, all I mean is outside of the five senses, and um, uh, but not that it is less than or better than, right? There's just the five senses to me are this small percentage of what's available, a, a delightful percentage, and in many ways kind of the whole point of why bother being in a gravity realm as we are right now um, is to have the experience, the embodied experience is like nothing else. But bringing kind of the cosmic and the multidimensional, the pan-dimensional in is, you know, that's really like that's incredible to be able to have that both and of all of those things. But you begin to have connection with, you know, with with the beings that are around you. You start to be able to communicate with trees, with plants, with animals, with fish, with um, birds, uh, you know, a, 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 a a patch of moss has is a collective that has an incredible energy to connect with. Um, your your you begin to be able to connect with the the different energies, beings, whatever language you want for it that make up the collectives of waterways, um, of lakes, of rivers, of streams, of the ocean, of a stone, of a mountain, of a glacier. This is delightful to have this experience. And the more you go into this experience and the deeper uh, and wider your access to this experience becomes, the just the default is that humans become de-centered. Uh, and you can actually come to a place where you don't place a value on one type of life over another. This is spoken about in different philosophies and spiritual traditions um, and can be viewed with, you know, great horror by many humans because it, of course, deprivileges and decenters humans. But it is a very beautiful experience when you come into it. So what I want to also say is I've been talking about this kind of distillation, this stripping down, this leaning it down, this minimalist everythingness. That does not mean that you have to give up, if you will, the connection to your most lush beauty, magnificence, just complete richness of everything, that kind of lushness that may be a, such an important part um, of your experience being lovely and delightful and desirable, that kind of there is a distilled essence of that lushness, that beauty, that richness, that just teeming with lifeness. It's not about going without. It's about diving in deep to that inner pearl. So 
one of the big themes that's coming up is, you know, and we've had this theme for quite some time amongst humanity around kind of this idea of the power is in the people, right? This sort of like the power is in the people, and meaning the decentralization of power. And there's a lot of kind of taking back our power theme. And we're seeing this in many different ways. We're seeing this in, um, you know, how people are trying to come into some of the things that I talk about often around increasing your own access to and capacity for personal sovereignty. Um, but how do we do that in a way that also honors the harmonious relationship with other beings? And how do we work with kind of the energetics and the what we're calling into form from our individual essence and resonance and energetics in this, with the understanding that we're also we're not doing that in a vacuum. There is a collective for humanity. There is a collective for the beings on Earth. There is Earth herself uh, doing her things. So we have this this theme. Uh, this sort of the power is with the people. The power is in the people. The people should take back their power. We're seeing many external expressions of this. We've been seeing this for a long time. Um, right now, it's kind of getting a lot of play in the political world where on the kind of like classically sort of libertarian uh, side of things. But we can look back to the 60s and see the that was an absolute also kind of way in which we've had this kind of taking back the power. Um, we see many different political thought that is about decentralization of power in many different ways and kind of inappropriate, abusive, toxic power and the ways in which many of our government structures no longer work well for us or work at all for us and kind of levels of corruption in, mer in various different ways. So that is one area where we see this ex external expression of this. Right. Um, and in fact, the war energies that we're seeing on the planet um, externally, um, you know, the Russia, Ukraine situation, uh, you know, is uh, one that is really capturing the hearts and minds of many. Although we have war experiences happening in many places, um, this is a kind of the extreme. Right. It's kind of the end game ex external expression of this. What I want you to know is that all of this is actually it's an internal thing that's happening and that is then expressing itself out in the external circumstance. Right. So bringing our energy and our magic and our power that we have placed elsewhere back into ourselves is a really important part of what we're doing now. This idea of what is mine and what is not mine, we may have focused quite a bit on the removal of what is not mine or the disconnecting or unplugging from what is not mine. That's so important. And what is yours that you haven't pulled back into yourself that you've put somewhere else? And you want that magic back. You want those little sparkly magical bits to come back. You want that authority or that energy to come back in various different ways. So it's really there's a both end for this, right? And be looking at this and, and thinking about it and understanding that um, that as you continue to kind of do this work and you continue to rise in your uh, expansion of your light and your energetics, as you continue to kind of do this distillation, that just as a byproduct of that kind of the, the kind of the radio transmitter that you are, that signal is much larger. And so the kind of the lighthouse effect that you bring into the world by being what you came here to be at the highest level that you're currently in this moment able to be, that is actually the, one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful ways that we can all collectively shift these collective external expressions of what's going on because the faster we each can kind of do it internally, the less need there is for it to be worked out externally. So understand that Earth herself, she is cleansing and washing out as well. Right. She dissolved her lower timelines January 21st. Look back to earlier episodes where I speak about this in depth and kind of what has occurred since. Um, but she is there's like a cleaning house as well. Right. And um, and her distillation into her next uh, level of kind of purest earth energy is. Creating the urge within us to do the same. 
because we are all affected by Earth. Remember that Earth does not require humanity, but humanity requires Earth. Right. Remember that we are just that one little tiny like zoom back out. Right. We're just like that little tiny, little tiny microorganism to Earth, just as within your human body, the billions of microorganisms in there, you don't give a thought to except for when they're not working for you. Back to the prevention discussion from earlier. So the harmonization within you the drive towards that is really coming from Earth. So she is pushing these, she's not even pushing, she's emanating out these huge, brilliant waves of energies, of frequencies, of light, and these are unstoppable. You can't stop this. No one can stop this. From inside, out of Earth, up and out, as much as we are experiencing sort of similarly unstoppable energies, frequencies, and light coming in from the cosmos. Humans are designed, as all beings on Earth, are designed to resonate with and kind of align with the energetics of Earth. And we see this through various different, um, um, you can look at research from the HeartMath Institute, for example, and kind of think about the Schumann resonance, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm not going to go down those um, little sciencey holes, but they're fun areas to geek out on if you're interested uh, in that. But we are designed to align with earth energies so earth energies they're going up baby so you kind of have to go along for the ride or get off the ride is what's really going on so to keep uplifting and embodying that unstoppable light in your human biology right this and this has a huge impact on minimizing the disruptive external nature um, of things that we are seeing now right those timelines that we have dissolved during, you know, so that, that would have created a very different experience in the past two years, that could have created a very different experience now in terms of war energies. There, you know, co humanity's collective timelines, we have seen some dissolving of lower timelines, but there is still much openness, right? It's choose your own adventure is the theme for the year. So that's choosing your own adventure individually, but also there is a harmony that occurs based on what are the adventures everyone is choosing, <laughs> right? Like this is a big giant, you know, it's a choir. Everyone's singing. What are the notes they're singing? That matters, right? If you have just a few beings singing these really beautiful pure notes and you have all these other beings singing like really crappy notes, the song is crappy, right? So that's what's going on. Now, uh, some beings have a bigger presence in that choir than others. And so that's almost as if like some beings have a microphone attached to them, like a little, you know, little mic, allowing their voice to be stronger. So if you're listening to this, you're probably one of those. And so understanding that, you know, the light that you can cast or the note that you are singing or the notes that you are singing have a, a disproportionate impact on the potential for harmonization of the song that is humanity. So this song that is humanity is evolving into homo lumens, as I've spoken about many times, and my awareness and what I have been shown is that on the other side, as we move through the eye of the needle, on the other side, really the passageways, the, no, the, the, the pathways, excuse me, the different timelines, the ones that are, uh, that continue will all eventually coalesce around this homo lumens evolution and the ones where uh, singers in the Song of Humanity w w don't want that, that those, those timelines end. Um, and I'm not talking about apocalypse and blah, blah. I'm not talking about any of that, okay? This is just, you know, what's the individual doing? Where is the in what's the individual want to do and be, right? And this is not to say when people die, that's because they didn't, they weren't good enough to go to the next level. No, 
We have seen many beings have chosen to be here to create various different experiences for themselves and also for the upliftment and support of humanity in the human journey um, and for the earth in many ways. And some of those we know of and they can be famous people. And, um, you know, like I'm thinking about uh, Thich Nhat Hanh, an incredible luminary bodhisattva ascended master energy in human form who left the day after Earth dissolved her timelines. His work was done. That being visited me on his way out, and we had an incredible interaction about, like, celebration, right? And um, and there were interesting um, shares to me in my, you know, here, uh, in my kind of what, whatever I'm aware of in this kind of human cosmic integration that is morphing and evolving every moment, um, and expanding every moment around what is, what are the ramifications for me, right? Because as if you've listened to earlier messages, you know that my, my kind of work, if you will, my, or, the organizing principle for my life was that work with the planet and to see her have completed that work. What then should I then also leave? You know, that was an option. And it was, no, that's not what I came here to do. I didn't come here to, to, to leave at that point, but he did. Right. And um, and so we could sort of celebrate and be in union together. And now he the being that is that we think of as him, because we think of that human as as male. But gender is irrelevant um, uh, uh, in many realms, in many dimensions. Um, that being is now connected in different ways um, and doing different things. We see, um, you know, there are terrible terrible tragedies occurring with the external uh, expressions of these internal energies. Um, and many people f have current attention on uh, deaths that are occurring in Ukraine. I'm just going to use that as one example. Why does that happen? This is a very, this is like, we want to understand this as humans. We always want to understand that. Why would this horrible thing happen? And I, I'm not going to give you a blanket statement about why would that horrible thing happen. Um, I will tell you, I feel strongly that it could be dramatically worse. Um, and, uh, and that I'm all for any and all things that you feel called to do to bring in human level kind of physical world supports to beings that are in pain and suffering and dealing with tragedy. So there's nothing, I don't have this like love and light, do nothing but pray. Like that's not my approach, but you have to really feel into the what's mine, what's not mine. What's mine, what's not mine. Is it yours to get on a plane and go be there? Go do it. I love that for people who are really feeling that call. Um, is it yours to organize a massive fundraiser and raise, you know, a gazillion dollars for support? Go do it. I love that. I'm I'm funding into many of those. Um, I feel called in. That is a way that I feel called in from a tactical, practical, uh, physical way to support. Um, is it, you know, necessary for you to, to disconnect entirely from that experience? Do that. Like me, not me. What's mine to do right now um, to support kind of the, the highest version of the collective moving through the passageway and then moving through that eye of the needle? But I will say that there are many deaths that have occurred and will occur where the death is designed to create the great shaking, the great rattling, the great grabbing you up by the shoulders and saying, this will not stand. The power is with the people. The power is within you. Bring it back into you. Go find the power and the energy and the magic and the light that you have given away that needs to be with you and bring it back in. And there are ways in which we need shocking occurrences to wake us up to or uh, bring into awareness or focus priorities. Whatever language you want to use for it, it doesn't matter. Don't let those deaths be in vain. Do your work. I hope that you're able to do your work now, that you're in a phase where you can do this work from a place that feels, that the work feels joyful, that the work feels blissful. Um, and even in the moments when it feels crunchy and difficult, hopefully you're able to enjoy that. Um, I love my edges finding my edges, like having a situation occur that can show me, oh, here's an edge that I didn't realize was there. 
I'm here for that. That's what I designed this life for. That is why I gave myself this brain. That's the, one of the most common unifying experiences for the highly gifted is let me find that edge. I got to find that edge. I'm unhappy if I go too long without a little bit of an edge. Now, have I created, you know, decades of experience for myself where the edge was awful and painful and the only way to move through the edge was through, you know, difficulty and trauma and strife? Sure. Yeah, of course I did that. But I don't do that anymore, uh, and I haven't done that in some time, and you don't have to do that either. You can move to the place where it's about growth. It's about expansion. It's about the fun new experience. And that is the organizing principle for the rest of my life. It's like what is the fun new growth, new opportunity, new expansion, new creative expression, new of the, you know, and the deeper, wider, broader, more powerful embodied experience of my cosmic self and my original self integrating increasingly faster into my human embodied being. That's what I'm here now. That's what it's all about for me now. And um, and it can be about that for you if, you if that's what is calling to you. Pay attention to where, like what your story and what your narrative is about what you want. If your focus is on healing, do you, do you still need to heal? Is that still something you need to do? If so, great. But understand in terms of kind of what are you creating for yourself that at a broader perspective, in order to have the experience of healing, we must, we require the experience of illness or wound or damage, right? They're contained within each other. You cannot have the one without the other because you don't heal something that isn't, that's, per, that's wonderful as is. Right. So you want to kind of think about your words and your stories and, you know, go back to the episode called Your Body is a Story and incorporate that over into this work. Right. What is the story? The story really matters. What are the words? The words really matter. Um, I was t I was working with someone around the idea that they were talking about, um, you know, this is a, a woman in her mid 50s um, and frustrated with the fact that in the last year she's been having experiences uh, related to hormonal shifts that often occur for human women at that stage where then there's kind of vaginal discomfort um, and a loss of libido. And her feeling is, screw that. I'm not interested in that experience. I'm not done in that area and I'm going to heal my vagina. And I said, what if instead of healing your vagina, you're just reawakening your vagina? And oh, that was a really good expansion for her, right? And just it's these subtle tweaks. They make a huge difference because they matter. The words do matter here in this realm. Words are spells. Cast wisely is always my kind of half joke, not joke, right? Um, kidding, not kidding. Okay, so remember that your brain is doesn't give credence to that which it believes didn't happen, right? So this prevention piece is very important, right? Um, as we're talking about the larger patterns in the world. And remember that your neurobiology is a pattern. It is a habit. And part of what's going on right now is that it's time to rewire and upgrade the neurobiology in your human and the cosmic energies that have been coming in and now the earth and energies being pushed out are in part designed to interact with and upgrade you at the, you know, mitochondrial molecular tiniest particle level and also in your DNA. And there is some human science to support this and much of it is also still esoteric. But just using even just the human science around rewiring retraining your neural pathways and how we know this is absolutely possible at any age. The game is not over at any age in this regard. And remember, your body is a story, so age is also a story. Your neurobiology is a pattern. It is a habit. It may benefit from redoing that, from rewiring that. And I'm saying that again on purpose, right? Remember that the old evolution of the brain put into place old requirements of scanning for threats, scanning for negatives. 
we now have a new evolutionary requirement and we are mutating as we speak into a different neurobiological imperative to be able to hold and see the light. So you do the basic, very well understood, very widely taught neural rewiring activities. These can be things like journaling on what you're proud of from the day, what you're grateful for from the day. I would add in as a wonderful graduate um, of one of my programs mentioned to me recently that she added into her Brags and Gratitudes journaling that she does daily because I ask people to do that daily, um, uh, delights, her three delights for the day. I loved that. I was like, that's completely genius to add that in because the physical act of writing these like you know what are your top three things you're grateful for your top three things that you're proud of your top three things that delight you doing that every day that is one of the most effective ways to retrain your brain because what you're doing is you're retraining your brain to focus on the good stuff because your brain will just focus where it's going to focus, right? It'll default back to old habits. You have to stay on top of it. You always have to be in an appropriate kind of oversight role of your neural wiring, like that wise parent caring for the gifted child, right? That wise parent that cares for the gifted child would be supporting the wild, high, incredible opportunity, opportunities that that being has with that sort of brain while also understanding the risks of that sort of brain as well, right? Because what we know uh, about gifted kids is that there's a much higher rate of high school dropout for gifted kids. And that is because that structure the environment and structure of most high schools is not an appropriate structure for that being to flourish. Same thing for your neural wiring currently, the neural networks, the pathways in your brain. You can change these simply by going and being in the new ones that you want. It's as simple as which trails am I breaking out there in the woods? right? I'm, I'm out hiking. I'm out on the mountain. Which trails do I want to ride my bike down? There's some grooved in ones that people have been using. I don't want to use those anymore. Well, you're going to have to break your own trail. That might be a little harder in the beginning. It requires effort. It requires focus. It requires, you know, even a ruthless focus. And that's where this idea that I've shared with you before about the need to kind of cloister can really be important. Don't let in the shit that's going to drag you into the grooves in your neural pathways that you don't want to be in, that you don't want to live in. And you don't get to just snap your fingers and change those neural pathways. That's not how the physical biology works. It takes time, which is maddening. I know. I know. I, it, the whole kind of 3D physical realm, step by step, bit by bit, moment by moment, word by word process drives me insane sometimes. Because my cosmic being, my, the more I integrate into access to the pan-dimensional within my human, the more I'm like, but we don't need any of that. We can just do this. But we actually can't. We need the both because we came here to be the embodied in the physical with access to the five senses in the gravity realms, embodied expression of our cosmic pan-dimensional self. So we have to do both and. We may be out on the other side of the passageway already in most of our beingness. I know I am like way out there, like yippee, golden jubilee, yippee. But my biology still has to move through. I'm still supporting you to do that. So it's just, it's not as simple as the thoughts become things trope, right? Like people talk about that all the time, right? You know, when we talk about esoteric, oh, thoughts become things, like, yeah, and no, right? Like, it's just not that simple. So don't let any of those ideas that are out there that get just, you know, that get kind of like minimized or brought down into sort of a simpler version that loses the nuance, potentially, of the initial teaching. Um, don't let those be weaponized against you as like, oh, well, if I'm not in this perfect place, then I suck, right? No. Ten to those neural pathways. Do not allow that. There is no room for that. Just as there is no room for tyrants in the world and there is no room for corrupt governments in the world and there is no room for all this other bullshit, the powers and the people, bring it down into what you're standing for within yourself around what is there, what is allowed in here? That crap, not allowed. 
Here's what's allowed. What delights me? Do I know? Let me spend some time investigating. Let me write down a list of all the things that delight me. Let me write down a statement as I experience the things that delight me about how that then impacts my outcomes, if you will. So that you can then have a statement that says, when I feed and nourish and indulge, maybe, you know, really, if you want to kind of take some things on the nose that you might be struggling with, in that which delights me as my first priority, then X, Y, Z magical things occur for me. And then start stacking evidence underneath that. Write it down. Study it every day. Spend time with it. And be careful about the words that you use, right? You're not healing your ability to delight. Like, what the fuck? Don't do that, right? You're awakening it, reawakening it, because it was always there, right? There is, I'm going to speak about this in the future, um, but there is the, there are new codes opening up around access to the cosmic child within and this relates to the original self access as well. Um, and uh, it's a whole other thing. And so I, I'm not going to speak about it here now. But capacity for joy, capacity for delight, capacity for love, capacity for everything and anything, that's already in you. You're not working your way towards it. It's an uncovering. It's a remembering. All right. So... The energies right now, through at building through March, are and into April are also on a tactical level. They are supporting huge new visions and creative output for people. This can be extremely high, where things just get really clear about like, oh, this is the big, huge, cool thing that I'm doing next. This is the way, and you'll find that there is a simplify, a, excuse me, a simplification that has come through in that process. There's a distillation that has occurred to whatever the project is or the design in your business or the blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. You'll find that there, you'll just, when you look at those things as they're coming in, you'll, oh yeah, that's right. That's what Melanie was saying that. Yes, I see that. And I want you to see that because the more you can pay conscious attention to it and then kind of embed that into the story of what you're dealing with right now, the faster the flywheel of this, um, a distillation process will occur for you um, because, you know, the reality of the current neurobiology is that it's largely run by the subconscious, right? Um, and we're shifting that. We're shifting that into more of being in charge from the conscious. And so we want to just really continue to kind of pay attention to that and embed that. That's part of that neural rewiring piece. So, um, I want you to be thinking about those kind of mid and late April dates that I'm talking about, um, April 12th and April 22nd, um, and thinking about, like, I'm getting ready for these. Like, that's like the big giant party that I can't wait to go to, and I want to make sure that I'm going to show up in, like, my most favorite dress, or I'm going to bring, like, my coolest painting or whatever, however you want to think about it. Um really focusing on it from this distillation process, from this kind of, um, you know, really what's me, what's not me. And with, you know, with the understanding that at the center of each being is love and the experience of access to that love is joy. Right. Um, so really you may find that you know, there can be difficulties during some of this process. There's a kind of a, sort of a dissolving uh, aspect, uh, you know, sort of things may, there may be themes that are coming up that are related to separation, um, or, such as abandonment, betrayal, injustice, the war energies, those kinds of pieces. War is sort of the ultimate external expression of separation. Um, and that has, that that is in support of this issue of we can only go through the eye of the needle on our own. We can't bring everybody with us. There's this sort of distilling down to the unique core essence of you, that inner pearl of you, to then bring that through the eye of the needle where we join up again with everybody. And that kind of, there's a both and of sort of desire to separate out what's mine, what's not mine, to get clear about that so that we can then join back up into kind of the connection, into the harmony, into the interconnection, into the relational truth of the world um, in a way that is um, 
that is coming from a place that is more purely you, right? And so that's a desirable higher level of that experience. Okay. I've been talking for way too long and my throat actually is starting to get sore. Oh, it's been 55 minutes. Okay. So um, I'm going to stop this uh, in a moment. Um, I do want to uh, first just mention one thing that was a gift uh, brought into my awareness from my dear galactic brother who I love so much and I don't know where this human journey would have been for me without him. Shout out to you, boo, if you're listening. Um and that was there, you know, there was a, you know, a, a, a moment of kind of, oh, I'm trying to dissolve this. There's some energy here that needs to get dissolved or removed. And a reminder to connect with the trees and the reminder of the network of fungi, of uh, the, the sort of the mycelial network um, of fungi that connect the trees to each other. And that really connect that just this massive, you know, fungal network that just connects everything um, uh, that and the nature of of that fungi in its role in helping to decompose and kind of, you know, bring uh, essentially to kind of to sort of dissolve and decompose the dead stuff that is like there on the on the floor of of the forest right and bring it down back into the soil so that it can then become kind of the new rich soil for the new life and that role like that is really where we're at and and so I actually had a really beautiful experience um over overnight a couple of nights ago of bringing in um and really and it was really asking for and then allowing in this vast uh, esoteric level of the my, my, is it mycelial, mycelial networks, I think that's the right word, um, uh, and the energetics and the trees to like just come be around and in me and to do that work for me. And one of the beautiful experience of, experiences of that was this idea of, a, of that they didn't come in from a place of obligation. They came in from a place of joy and their service and support to me was a place of joy for them. And because I have done much to bring, be of service to them. And they were sort of like, hey, dude, like you could have been letting us be of service to you back a lot longer than, a lot earlier than this. <laughs> And I was like, oh, whoops, okay. And, you know, and so that was a note that I shared with folks um, the other day, but I want to emphasize it here kind of as we close out that, you know, allow others to be in service to you as much as you are in service to them and understand that there are, that there's changing energetics for these kinds of relationships now. So it's just, it can be a really beautiful place. And of course, service from obligation, like, gone dead stop it cut it out that's stuff that needs to be pruned out and dissolved out for sure um all right beautiful beautiful i hope that this is serving you and supporting you and uh i love you i thank you for your light in the world i am delighted to be in uh communion uh and harmony with you here <laughs> have a wonderful time